Welcome to The Big Question. I'm Angela Barnes and today I'm joined by Sandra Sarev, Estonia's Deputy Minister for Economy and Innovation. It's a pleasure to have you with us on The Big Question, Sandra. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Now, Estonia is really interesting to talk about when it comes to the, the digitalization of public services. It was ranked ninth in the EU as well on the European Commission's 2022 Digital Economy and Society Index. But it's been quite the journey since 1991 when Estonia became fully independent again. So first of all, can you just talk me through, Sandra, the economy and in infrastructure back in 1991 and how the country got to where it is now? So just a little remark there. Uh, ninth, we rank overall. But when it comes to offering public digital services, Estonia always ranks in top three. As Estonia has 99% of all public services available digitally so in 1991. Estonia regained its independence and we had been illegally occupied by the Soviet Union for half a century. Uh, so for five decades there was virtually zero economic growth. Um, 1938, uh, prior to the Soviet uh, occupation, Estonia's economy was roughly the same as Finland's, which is our other neighbor. Roughly you could say that both Finland and Estonia had 2,500 uh, international dollars uh, GDP per capita. 1991, Estonia's uh, GDP per capita was even lower than prior, than half a century earlier. So roughly 2,000 euros per capita. So you can imagine half a century of virtually no economic development compared to Finland, for instance, who had had half a century uh, to have economic focus and, um, and support. And their GDP per capita by 1991 was the same as Estonia's is today. Uh, so around 28,000 um, euros uh, uh, per capita GDP. So yes, uh, this half a century uh, didn't bring us any new developments. Our infrastructure was outdated. There was virtually no free economy. You know, it was a communist era uh, in our history. So we had to have a fully fresh restart back in 1991. And luckily we had very young, uh, fresh politicians at the time who thought that Estonia is going to need to do something different. And we did. Was it necessary to build public infrastructure the way that you have done? And how do you think it has put Estonia ahead? So half jokingly we say that we were too poor to afford anything else, which is in the same time, it's also a, a correct thing to say. Uh, so we skipped a lot of the steps that people were doing in the, in the second half of the 20th century. Uh, so we went virtually from 1940 uh, to the new era of technologies. Um, we uh, realized that we need to be efficient, which is one of the keys why Estonia is so digitalized in the first place. Digitalization brings you actually efficiency because you can do the same things with less resources, with less workforce. Estonia is only a country of 1.3 million people. You imagine we're not so big, uh, but we we don't like to be called tiny, we like uh, being called compact. So we had to adopt uh, digital systems in order to offer services in a more efficient way. The very first digital service that we had back in the year 2000 was actually tax declarations. So instead of queuing in line, we digitalized the service and nowadays it takes less than um, uh, five minutes to declare your taxes. So efficiency. But the private sector hasn't subscribed in the same way, has it? Why do you think that is? Is it to do with the trust and digitalization or something else? No, not at all. I mean, still, all of the companies are set up online. You cannot even set up a company, you know, physically on paper somewhere. And still, all the taxes are declared online. But the use of digital technologies, I think, has to do with the fact that we have so many companies. As I mentioned, every 10th Estonian has their own company. 84% are micro companies. I mean, if you set up your ice cream booth somewhere uh, for the summer, perhaps there's not so much to digitalize. Uh, so I think this is, uh, this is where the secret lays, uh, why we're uh, not so uh, digitalized in the business sector. Uh, is because we have so many companies and a large sum of them are small companies. What do you think other EU member states could learn from how you have progressed and how you've digitalized completely your public services? Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on air, but Estonia has something called the Skype Mafia. <laughs> uh, so Skype was set up initially in Estonia and nobody uses Skype anymore, but it was uh, very popular, you know, let's say 10 years ago, seven years ago. And so Skype was set up in Estonia and those guys who were the early guys and girls who were the early employees at Skype they went on and they built their own startups and companies. And Estonia has 10 tech unicorns, uh, which per capita is the most in Europe. And those people who built Skype then went to build on their own com uh, companies. And those companies of the first gen then went on and uh, built their second gen companies. And now we're already third gen Skype companies. And this community is very, very tight. Estonia is a compact country, if you remember. So people talk to one another and they give advice. And this this is a breeding ground uh, for startups, if I may say so. That's really impressive. 10 
unicorns yes. in Estonia, yes. and that is impressive per capita. What does Estonia have to offer as well a foreign corporation wanting to set up a company in yep. Estonia? I know you've given rise to globally successful companies like yep. Bolt, Skype and Wise, yeah. to name a few. It's the most uh, competitive tax environment in the OECD countries for six or seven years in a row already. Uh, we have 0% corporate tax on reinvested profits. So unless you take out dividends, as long as you reinvest, uh, there's no corporate tax in Estonia, um, you know, which, which is a competitive advantage. Estonia attracts a lot of capital uh, per capita again. So we say per capita Estonia always wins. In the year 2022 alone, um, Estonian startups attracted 1.3 billion euros. Um, and uh, this was on average uh, six, seven times more than uh, in Europe uh, per capita. So that's the e-residency card, is it? Uh, e-residency card um, is similar to Estonia's national ID card. So national ID card in Estonia is mandatory. So what's e-residency is, we figured we can give access uh, to Estonia's business environment with a similar type of digital ID. It's, it's not your personal identity document. You cannot travel with it. Mm -hmm. However, you can access those, uh, access those Estonian digital services. You can open up a company online wherever you're based in the world um, and you can open up a company in Estonia in 15 minutes and 33 seconds, which is a world record. Uh, so, of course, if, this is only if you do it regularly. If, um, if you're a newbie, it would take you a couple of hours, but still it's very efficient. You can fully declare your taxes online, you can provide digital signatures for documents, you can acquire property, you can acquire new companies without ever having to show up physically. And currently we have global Globally, over 100,000 e-residents who have opened around 30,000 companies in Estonia and uh, they not only bring us economic benefit by paying some taxes in Estonia but they employ locally, they bring new innovation to Estonia so we're really happy with the e-residency project. It sounds uh, like a very appealing place then for startups to do business and Estonia is relatively small as we've said, uh, do you think that's made it easier to create digital services? So both yes and no. It's made it easier uh, because obviously uh, you have only 1.3 million people. However, it's more difficult because as we started in 1991, we didn't have a lot of resources, meaning capital. So if you are a larger country, if you have more capital, it's easier to, uh, to build the best systems uh, possible. So we've always had to innovate and, uh, and uh, be more inspired with what we can do with the resources that we have. That's great to get your insights on all of that. Sandra Sarav, thank you ever so much for talking to us on The Big Question. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for thank having you. me.